Woodsboro Bridge AFC are a team playing their trade in the NCEL1 division, where they have finished the season sitting 15th. The club are located in the small village of Woodsboro, which is located in the metropolitan borough of Barnsley. In this documentary, we will be focusing our attention on how important our local non-league teams are in the community, as well as finding out more about the Briggers and the village surrounding it. So without further ado, welcome to Woodsboro Bridge, a short documentary. Now when it comes to understanding the English football pyramid, it can get a little bit confusing, and understandably so. To make it a little bit simpler, I am going to run down the top six levels of the pyramid to give you a brief understanding how it works and what teams grace each division. Starting from the highest level of English football, we have the Premier League, which is arguably one of the most entertaining divisions in the world and has had some of the greatest players in the world grace the division. In the Premier League, you have, as we like to call it, the Big Six, which consists of Manchester City, Manchester United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs and Liverpool who are all fighting for not just the right to the best team in England, but also the champions of the world. In level two, we have the championship, which is well known for being one of the most unpredictable leagues around where anyone can win anyone. The likes of Sheffield United, Stoke and Sunderland, just to name a few, have all been known to have successful seasons in the Premier League. However, staying there for some of these teams has certainly been a challenge. For the likes of Stoke, who earned themselves the rights of being a mid-table Premier League side, now find themselves, all these years later, sat 16th in the Championship as of recording this, which just shows how challenging the Championship is to get out of. In Level 3, we have League 1, which has only got tougher to get out of as the seasons have passed, with iconic teams such as Derby County and Sheffield Wednesday finding themselves fighting for promotion to the Championship. Like the Championship, predicting results in League One is near enough impossible, which just shows you how even in Level 3 of English football, the competition is as fierce as ever. Now moving on to Level 4, we have League Two, which has been known to not just be a tough league to crack, but also a league not to be underestimated. This season alone in the FA Cup, League Two side Grimsby Town did the unexpected, beating Championship side Luton Town, as well as a superb 2-1 win over Premier League outfit Southampton. Unfortunately for the Marinas, they were beaten by Brighton in the quarter-finals. However, the run, not just for the club, but for League 2 fans, will be one to remember for the foreseeable future. As we slowly move down level, the quality of players and quality of teams slowly fades. However, in level 5, which is the National League, as of recording this, already two teams have hit the 100-point mark this season. We have Wrexham, who are well known for partly being owned by American film star Ryan Reynolds, and even have their own Disney Plus show, Welcome to Wrexham. And we have Notts County, who are the oldest professional football club in the world. These two teams alone clearly display the depth and quality English leagues have. Finally, we have Level 6, the National League North and South. Even though the quality of teams and players is certainly the weakest, teams such as Stockport County have proven breaking into the top four levels of English football is certainly more than doable, as they went from winning the National League North in 2019 to now fighting for promotion to League One just four years later. With Woodsboro sitting in the 10th tier of English football, it is clear to see they are nowhere near the top six levels. And with this in mind, it is an even greater incentive we as local fans do our bit to support our local non-league sides. Unfortunately, the revenue of teams lower down the pyramid is slowly decreasing as time passes, with semi-professional sides only recently getting the limelight, with the likes of Hashtag United and Dorking Wanderers being great examples of teams who have thrived off the attention social media has given them. Now, Woodsboro Bridge AFC was founded in 1923 as Woodsboro Bridge St James. Funnily enough, the club itself has been renamed Woodsboro Bridge's Miners Welfare and Athletic in 1961. <sighs> Bit of a mouthful that one. But the club name was actually changed due to a partnership with the local miners' welfare scheme. However, in 2006, this was changed to Woodsboro Bridge Athletic. And I tell you what, I like it. Short and snappy, straight to the point. What else would you want in the football name? Right? The club itself has moved from division to division over time, as slowly the leagues have changed. They joined the Barnes and Nelson League in 1939, where they were runners up in the league. But the good form certainly carried on as the following season, they were crowned champions. Not the champions of England, bear in mind, but still an achievement nonetheless. 
1949, they switched to the Barnsley Association League, where they carried on their impressive form as they were crowned champions in the 1950-51 season and the 51-52 season, as well as League Cup winners in the 56-57 season and 58 and 59 season respectively. Back to the present and Woodsboro Bridge find themselves in the 10th division of the English Pyramid, which is the NCEL1 division. The Briggers have been located in the Northern Counties Leagues since 1982 and after a slightly disappointing turnaround in form from last season to this season, they've gone from finishing last season 9th to this season 15th. Their top scorer this season, Connor Glavin, finished on 15 goals. If you're from the area of Barnsley, the name Glavin will certainly ring a bell, as Connor's dad Ronnie Glavin ranks as one of the greatest Barnsley players of all time, playing for the likes of Celtic throughout his career. Now it's amazing to see that even in the 10th level of English football, grounds like this are kept in amazing condition. Because at the end of the day, without grounds kept in good condition like this by ground staff and the club itself, well, there'd be no football. Woodsboro Bridge's attendance this season averages at 127 per game, which listed on the NCEL website is a 2.31% decrease from last season. Now managing any team in a game as competitive as football takes a lot of skill and a lot of composure. However, for managers like Neil Warnock, for example, they've got their own way of doing it. Jody, that serves you right for Muscat, that. Huh? Serves you right for Muscat. Huh? Funnily enough, one of the more iconic names to come out of Woodsboro is a football manager. Mick McCarthy is well known for being one of the classics when it comes to English football managers and he himself certainly has had his fair share of iconic moments including the mysterious ghost incident that went viral on YouTube. For Woodsboro Bridge, they trusted Luke Forgione to take up the mantle of head coach. With this in mind, it was only right I spoke with him to understand a bit more what made him go into coaching and what his aspirations are going forward. Um, okay, Luke Forgione, uh, first team manager at Woodsboro Bridge, day-to-day -day job, uh, sports performance and athlete development coordinator at Barnsley College, stroke teacher. Been manager of Woodsboro Bridge first team for two full seasons um, and a Covid season as well, which were like nine games. So two full seasons um, and nine games, so two and a half years, well, around about two and a half years. What made you want to go into management? It was progression really. So it's been part of a 10 year journey where I first started, well, I came to the end of playing and started progressing into coaching. And then as I've gone through the coaching journey, it was nat the next natural step was for me to go into management. So, started off in grassroots football initially, progressed into Sheffield United Academy, went to Australia as well during that time, come back, um, continued to get better as a coach, develop myself qualifications, and it's just the next natural progression. I want to, I want to as manage as high as I can in non league management, so I had to get on the ladder. So, That's what, what is it like not just managing but also playing your part in the team? <laughs> well, um, obviously, I've played in the past, but I had to sign. I signed on this year, and I was close to playing uh, because of injuries and things like that. But thankfully, at my age, nobody got me. I didn't manage to get on the pitch. So, but um, I don't intend on playing. It was just um, a matter of urgency that I had to sign on, and um, it was very, very close that I did actually nearly, nearly play in one game. But I have no intention of playing again. So, what are your overall thoughts on this season? I think on reflection, um, obviously the first season we had, we finished in the top 10 and I think we were hoping that we'd finish in the top 10 again this year, um, but such a bad start to the season, we lost nine out of the first 10 games, which meant that we were playing catch up and more or less in a relegation scrap all year. But then if you look at the season as a whole, after the first nine games, I think we lost nine in the, the last 29 games in comparison to losing first, the, well, nine out of the first 10, so it wasn't too bad. And if you look at the league table, there's teams who have finished just outside the playoffs that lost the same amount of games as we did. So, unfortunately, we didn't win enough games to, to get us up the table. But on reflection, I think the club's only got 40 points 15, uh, 15 times or more in 40 years. And we've managed to do that twice in two seasons. So, 
on reflection, probably not too bad, but not good enough for what we want. And what are your plans for next season as you're staying on the manager? Yeah, I intend to stay. Um, we're hoping that we can build on um, this year and we want to be striving for that top 10 again. Um, but it's not an easy, it's not an easy task. I think the the league is very competitive and difficult, and the money in the league is more than I think it's ever been. So it's it is a it's a difficult league now, and and obviously with us local rivals on the doorstep as well, that makes it we lost we lost both games to them this year, so that makes it difficult as well. And there's rumours that uh, Wilmot Town might be joining us as well next year, so there might be three clubs from Barnsley in the area in the same league, so which would be interesting, but. We have aspirations that we want to finish in the top 10 and we want to strive for the playoffs. Like, like I've always said, our, the Wisbur has never been higher than the league that they're currently in and, and we want to be the first team or the first management staff to try and get Wisbur in the NCL Prem and people might laugh but got to strive for something. Even though the football club is certainly one of the better known things to come out of Wisbur, the village itself has certainly got more than enough history to it. The village itself is actually counted as a separate place completely from Barnsley. However, it is often treated as a part of Barnsley due to the two settlements running into each other. Coal mining, like a lot of places surrounding the village, was a pivotal part in day-to-day -day life. However, a tragic incident in 1849 saw 75 miners killed in what is known to be the Darley Main Colliery Disaster. The village of Woodsborough also does not shy away from having places of worship, with the likes of St Thomas and St James Church standing proudly over the scenic neighbourhood. With Woodsborough Bridge's final game of the season being played at home whilst I was filming, I took it upon myself to go down to Park Road to see what football was really like in Woodsborough. Even though the shipping certainly was not going to be serving me anytime soon, it did not take me long to find an alternative. Just up the road from the ground, I found the Red Lion, which was a brilliant sight to see, especially with the ground only being across the road. As I found my spot in the ground itself, it was clear to see, with this being the last game of the season and Barnsley playing away from home, the community certainly turned out to watch the Briggers. As the players started to walk out, I think all of us fans were hoping the game would be as decent as the weather. And well, that was technically the case. If you were a Shirebrook Town fan, that is. In terms of the league before the game, Shirebrook sat in a not-so-thrilling relegation spot and needed a win to end the season on a high. Even though Woodsboro Bridge finished the season above the drop zone, whatever the result, they themselves would have wanted to finish the season on a high also. After a few half chances for both teams didn't trouble either keeper, a goal was surely on the horizon, and we did get one. However, to most of our disappointments, it was not for the Briggers. In the 35th minute, Lewis Mers cross found Keani Clayton at the back post, as he marked his return from injury with a composed header. And I don't know about you, but I have a feeling the away fans certainly enjoyed that one. After that Shirebrook Town goal, there wasn't really much action to talk about. As the referee blew for half-time, it was clear to see to everyone in the Park Road Stadium, if Woodsboro was to turn this around in the second half, it would have to be a much improved performance. As much as I would love to tell you Woodsboro had turned it round early on, well, I'd be lying. Luckily enough for Woodsboro's goalkeeper, I wasn't able to clip his mistake leading to Shirebrook's second. However, what is clear to see is Jake Squires was there to take advantage of the mistake, smashing it in for the second of the game. It went from bad to worse for the home side, as a sending off for a late challenge meant Woodsboro Bridge was down to 10 men, meaning the Briggers' chances of turning this game around were slowly becoming too much to ask for. With the home side down to 10 men and Shirebrook flowing with confidence, it was no surprise the third goal went to the away side. A neat piece of play from that man again, Clayton, left Woodsboro defenders on ropes as he neatly put the ball past the onrushing keeper. One thing that is clear to see from this game is that even though the quality of football is certainly not comparable to teams in the higher up levels, the action itself is second to none. A supposed punch from a Wusbra player meant they was down to nine men, and even worse, Shirebrook earned from this decision a penalty to potentially make it 4-0. Luckily enough for the home side, it wasn't all doom and gloom, as substitute Tansley missed the pen. I have a feeling Shirebrook's Tansley will certainly not want me to talk much about the penalty, so I'll let him off on this one. As the full-time whistle blew, with the game finishing 3-0, an action-packed season for Wusbra Bridge had come to an end. Even though the result for the home side was a bitter way to end the season, for a neutral like me, it was amazing to see something a bit different from a typical football, and to be nearer to the action was certainly a bonus. As I spoke about earlier, Woodsbury's attendance had unfortunately dropped from last season. 
Teams as successful as Barnsley in recent times has certainly had an impact on these figures. I spoke to die-hard Barnsley fan Felix Rogers to find out more about his experience going to a local non-league game, as well as George Braithwaite, who currently plays for Wasbrough Bridges under-23s, to learn more about his experiences so far, what advice he would give to the younger generation of footballers, as well as how we can do more to get supporters through the doors of our local non-league teams. I've been a Barnsley fan all my life. I've had a season ticket for a fair few years now. Come with all my mates, sit at Ponty End. Yeah, I'm just really enjoying the season. I've been to a few uh, non-league teams this season. I've been to Penson Church. They're quite a big uh, team in the local area I like to go and watch. So I really enjoy the games. It's good quality football. And I've also been to watch a few games at Woodsborough. It's similar to Penniston, good setup. Uh, yeah, it's just really entertaining to go and watch when you've got a free night to go and do something. I think definitely going to watch uh, like Penniston Church or Woodsborough where I've been. It's definitely more unique, uh, closer to the action. Uh, like the stands aren't as big, so you have to stand closer to the pitch. It almost feels like you're there playing. Uh, I mean, the quality of football is definitely more, it's, it's different, but I do like it. It's, it's a really good experience. You can go with all your mates, because obviously most mates support different uh, football teams. So when it's a non-league team, you can all go together. It's cheap to get in uh, and you can just go in like, it's a good like two hours to go and do something with your mates, because the football is really good to go and watch and it's always exciting and thrilling. The higher up teams like Barnsley and other like Championship League One uh, clubs could do a bit more to advertise non-league teams playing, like for instance if Barnsley don't have a game at the weekend or in a, on a weekday, there's lots of other non-league teams playing, they could easily tweet out like where it is, what time, kick off and things like that, that could get more people to go and watch them play, but at the moment I haven't seen much like, of that like to try and help them out, so they could definitely do a lot more. But. Personally I would not miss uh, a Barnsley game to go and watch a non-league side, mainly because obviously I've, I'm a big supporter of Barnsley and I've got a season ticket, I've paid money to go and watch them play, but I mean but both games are as entertaining, I'd say, but just for the main reason that I paid, I'd rather just go and uh, watch Barnsley instead of an under team. Uh, I've been playing two seasons now. Started off in under 21s and now I'm in under 23s. And uh, uh, I'm only 17, so it's quite uh, challenging playing up for a couple of years, but it's quite physical, but it's, uh, it's quite intense. Quality of football is good. You get to travel about, go to some good grounds, and uh, I'm enjoying it. Obviously, the end goal is to get into a first team, definitely. Um, but it'll take a lot of hard work because even some older lads are only just getting in that squad. So there's definitely a long way to go, but it's definitely a next step to get into a first team wherever I go because um, the level of football is higher, you know, and you even start to get paid at that stage as well. So it's definitely the next step in my career. Uh, definitely to um, stay motivated because coming up to playing older football, especially to start where you don't get a lot of game time and, you know, you're not really with your mates, but if you keep with it, obviously you don't get as much game time at the start, but if you keep trying and then you've just got to, when you get your minutes on pitch, you've just got to give 100%, try your hardest and um, hopefully you get recognised. But definitely always try and play in older age groups because you learn a lot more. It's more physical and if you get used to that earlier on, when you get older and when you get more physical, you'll find it a lot easier. Well, obviously, you know, they have a Twitter account where they post like scores, updates and uh, stuff about games, but... I think in general media, it's not really um, gone into firm enough. I think there could be a lot more support, you know, especially like local people. I think it's it's not much different than watching, you know, bands. Obviously, quality is good and it's in a stadium, but you know, you're watching football. I think um, that there definitely could be a lot more spotlight shone on it. For teams as low down the pyramid as Woodsboro Bridge, it is clear to see not enough is being done to give these lower league teams the limelight they deserve. We need the help of not only you guys watching this, but us as journalists across the UK to get the word out there. Our local non-league teams need us in hope for survival and to keep the structure of the pyramid strong. We hope you enjoyed this documentary and hope to see you potentially at a local non-league ground very soon. Alfie Broomhead, Woodsboro Bridge.